Hello, I'm Mr. Daney, and today we're going to learn dimensional analysis. This is an Algebra 1 standard, and all dimensional analysis is, is, is unit conversions. This is not so much a big thing for this year as a whole, but it is a big thing for science. Uh, if you are in the physical science course this year, and for science going forward, such as in chemistry when you get to high school, it is important that you know. It's a little tricky, so you just have to follow along with me. So the first problem we're going to do is, this is sort of an old thing, so it's just converting, right? So if I tell you, for every one watermelon, I'll give you six apples. All right? That is what is called a unit conversion. Watermelons, two apples. So if I ask you, if I have, if I want five watermelons, how many apples must I give you? All right, and this is a pretty simple problem. You've learned this basics before in other middle school classes. It's not that hard, but this is just a basic idea of what it is. So this is how you set it up. You make a little diagram like this, all right? And you have to ask yourself, what am I starting with, all right? I start and I want five watermelons. So I'm just gonna erase all of this. So five watermelons. How many apples do I owe you? So this is the trick to this whole thing, right? Knowing that the units go diagonal. So if this is watermelons and you're gonna go diagonal, this is gonna be watermelons. Now, this is where you have to convert it. Do you have a direct conversion from one thing to another? In this case, you do. You know that for every one watermelon, you have six apples. So watermelons, two apples. And now how many watermelons per apples? Six apples, one watermelon, right? And then, this is the easy part. You multiply across the top and across the bottom. Now that might not seem very difficult now because you only have one thing on the bottom. But in a couple examples, you will. So I'm just gonna move over to this one here. So five times six is 30, and one times one is one. Now I still have watermelons and apples, but as you know, you can reduce. So if I have watermelons here, that takes away watermelons there, and what am I left with? Apples. So the answer is just 30 apples. Now that we got that one done, we're going to do another example, but this one's going to be more relative to what you'll see on a quiz, test, or in future in science. So the big conversion we're going to use this year is 0.621 miles for every one kilometer. All right, this is a big deal because we go miles here in America, uh, the rest of the world uses meters. So this is a big conversion, you'll see it the other way. Now if there's a conversion you don't know, it'll usually be on there. But there is some general ones that we'll get into here in a minute that you do need to know, and they won't give it to you because it's common sense. But this is the one I will be using if I ever show you a dimensional analysis problem this year. All right, so let's say I wanna know how many, let's see, I go five miles. How far is that in kilometers? So I say five miles, and I wanna switch that to kilometers. So what do I start with? Well, I started with five miles. So that is always gonna be my first thing. Whatever you start with, this is the start, all right? 
That's what it has to be. Now, if you remember from the lab, from just a couple minutes ago, if this is miles, what does this have to be? It has to be miles because the units move diagonally. Now that I'm at miles, do I have a conversion from miles straight to kilometers? Yes, I do. It's right here, I already gave it to you. So if this is miles, this has to be kilometers. And then all you have to do is write in your conversion. So for every 0.621 miles, I have one kilometer. And now, you should already know, you multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom. So that gives me five over 0.621. Now you still have miles and kilometers, but the miles cancel out because you have miles on top and on the bottom. So you're left with your kilometers. And the final answer is, you should have a calculator, is 8.05 kilometers. And that is a basic unit conversion. It's one that you will use quite a bit. All right, now for our, for our third example, this one is a little bit more complicated than the last one. If you understood the first two, good. This is gonna be the one that takes it to that next level. And it's the one you'll see most commonly when you get the physics later on. Uh, a lot of this is in chemistry, so you have to be very, very good at it. So our problem is gonna be 20 miles per hour to kilometers per second. Now the one we did before was just simply one unit conversion to another. This actually has two unit conversions. So miles to kilometers and then hours to seconds. So we have to do two different ones, but it's gonna be on the same, uh, just the same table, all right? And I have two different colors. So the first one we're gonna do, because we've already done it this way, is miles to kilometers. I already have the conversion up there, which is good. So what did I start with? I started with miles per hour. So 20 miles, all right? Like I said, we're just gonna convert the miles to kilometers first. I will show you what to do with the hours in a second in one minute, all right? So 20 miles. Remember, units go which direction? Diagonal. So if this is miles, this is miles down here. Now, do we have direct conversion from miles to kilometers? Yes, I already gave it to you. And then it's just the fill-in process. 0.621 for one kilometer. All right, now this is where it gets tricky. We are done. We've reached our kilometers, which is what we needed to get to. So mark it off. And yeah, just mark it off. Now, this is where everybody gets mixed up. So since we have a second unit conversion, we put it still on this table. But then we do miles. Where is the open space here? Down here miles per hour, okay? Think of this line as a per line. Your division sign in fractions is a per anyways. So there you go. Now we stick with the same thing that we said before. I'm using a different color just to show you. So if I have hours here and I'm trying to convert it, where should hours go, the top or the bottom? Your first instinct would be to say the bottom, but it is not has to go up top, diagonally. Now this is where people usually mess it up, diagonal. You have to stay diagonal, all right? So now, this is one I was talking about earlier. You should already know the conversion to get from hours to seconds. There's two ways to do it. The way I'm gonna do it is the longer way for right now. So for every one hour, how many minutes do you have? You learn this in elementary school. So you have 60 minutes. But is minutes what we want? No, so we have to convert that to seconds. So for every, so keep going diagonally with units. That's the trick, diagonal units. So for every one minute, you have 60 seconds. We reached our seconds, we are good here. Got it, got it, so now, Nothing different from before, you multiply across the top. So it's 20 times one times one times one is 20, and then you multiply across the bottom. 0.61 times 60 times 60, which I have no idea what it is.
So the answer is 2235.6 when you multiply across the bottom. Now you have to simplify that, so all you have to do is 20 divided by 2235.6, and your final answer is 0 0.008. Nine kilometers per second. And that is how you do a unit conversion or dimensional analysis using two unit conversions. So I've given you three examples. You can do the work for it now. If you need to come back, you can go watch it a time again or just read through what you have already. Good job.